بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر اور تیجائی وی کنٹینیو دی ٹاپک آف فیلڈرنگ فائنلی وی کنکلوڈڈ می بی یو نو دی کوشچن ارائزڈ ان آر مائنڈ وین وی اینڈڈ اپ دی پریویس ویڈیو سو وی سو دی دی امپلس ریسپونس Uh, was not equal for the was not equal to zero for the negative values of time so the 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 ideal filters the best filters you could say they uh, were not practically reliable realizable because those were representing a non-causal system and for a system to be practical to be to be to to exist so all practical systems are causal systems which means that the impulse response h of t should be zero for the negative values of time So then the question was that how would we use a filter fine so so that this video is the answer to that question realizable filters let me read some points out from the book so in many applications frequency selective filtering is accomplished through the use of LTI systems described by linear constant coefficient differential equations right and we know what this is and no i don't want to read them so uh, the thing is the thing is that we would be uh, you know doing what considering a simple rc circuit considering a simple rc circuit so we have one is our source voltage represented by a vs the the other is my resistor this is the voltage across this would be vr and let's say i take the output from my capacitor and the voltage across the capacitor is a vc so now it is my choice to take the output from the capacitor or the resistor so let's say in this case my output is from the capacitor say output is equal to vc right so what do we have what do we have let's say if i apply kvl to this loop the kirchhoff's voltage law so what do i get is i have that the voltage uh, rise is vs so this would be equal to the two voltage drops the sub so vr plus vc right isn't it like this it is now we know uh, we want to express uh, this uh, we see in terms of we are or we s no we want to represent this we are in terms of we see or we s right so for that what do i have i have that the current through the capacitor i see this is equal to the capacitance times the the derivative of the voltage across the capacitor right so what do i have is as this is the series circuit this is a series circuit so the current through the capacitor would be the same as the current through the resistor so i would write this as equal to ir why because this is a series circuit so what do i have my vr would become ic into r right uh, uh, this would imply what that my vr which is basically equal to ir into r this would become ic into r and this would become rc times the derivative of the voltage uh, uh, and dt and the derivative of the voltage across the capacitor right yes so which means i can put these values in this equation and this would become that my vs is equal to uh, vr is now rc the derivative of vc with respect to t and then plus vc so i have a look i have i have represented my vr in terms of vc so basically vc is my output terms and vs is my input terms so i have got the desired the desired linear constant coefficient differential equation this one is it this is my linear constant coefficient differential equation you know this very well whatever it is now for the case of simplicity if i consider my input to be a to be a complex exponential signal a sinusoid or whatever let's say if my input is equal to uh, and and what is my input this is vs so if my input is exponential of j omega t so what would this imply 
can I not deduce from here that that the that the output that the output which is equal to the voltage across capacitor we see so this would be equal to the the same function as this is an eigenvalue of the system and how do we conclude that this is a, 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 a an LTI system so we've already seen that the linear constant coefficient differential equations are those equations which we are using in our course to describe the LTI systems so we basically have deduced it from here that as this is an LDI system as this is a linear constant coefficient differential equation so the system that it is describing is an LTI system and now if this is an LTI system so if the input is an exponential as uh, a complex exponential signal the output would be some scaling factors times that signal again and we know what the scaling factor is also at this stage we know that this is the frequency response h of j omega times the same signal h of j exponential of j omega t and isn't it like this it is now what you can do it we need the frequency response to know what type of the filter it is right well, we know it from the previous video, so we put these two values in this equation, and let me name it at equation number one. So, what would now happen? This one would imply one would imply what? And uh, let me write. So, one would imply you have V s on one side. So, so V s is exponential of j omega t, right? This is equal to you have r into c. Then you have the derivative of vc and vc is h of j omega times exponential of j omega t then you have vc again which is h of j omega times exponential of j omega t so now what do i have i i put this exponential of j omega t you have rc then you have what the derivative is with respect to t so h of j omega would be constant it would come outside and then you have what the derivative of exponential of j omega t with respect to t so j omega would come down multiplied and then you have the same term exponential j omega t and then plus again h of j omega exponential of j omega t is that final here it is now what can you do is uh, you can cut the exponential of j omega t of course because this is common in on the three factors so finally you have what you have equal to one one is equal to uh, uh, rc let me write first h of j omega h of j omega then this j omega and then rc and then plus again h of j omega now what can i do is i can finally uh, take my h of j omega common and this would be j omega rc plus 1 so which means that I have finally got my h of j omega is 1 upon 1 plus j omega rc now this is a complex number again so it would have its phase it would have its magnitude the phase we are not interested in we are interested in the magnitude of h of j omega so that we can uh, we can tell about the type of the filter that it is so anyway the book has a drawn in so what sort of a filter is this uh, if you draw it in your matlab properly if you draw proper graph you draw proper graph so this is this is something like this the magnitude this is it this is it if this is your omega axis this is equal to 1 at omega equal to 0 now have a look what is this filter doing the filter the values of omega if they are equal to 0 so the magnitude of the h of j omega is equal to 1 for those frequencies that are nearer to 0 right and as you increase omega on the either side the frequency response becomes lower and lower and lower and as omega tends to infinity the frequency response tends to 0 what sort of a filter this this of course this is a high pass uh, this is a low pass filter so this is a non-ideal low pass filter that we have designed that we have designed isn't it like this it is so uh, you know let me see what the book says 
after this. Uh, here it is. So the magnitude and phase of this and that for this example are shown in this. Note that for the frequencies near omega is equal to 0, h of j omega is approximately equal to 1, right? While for larger values of omega, positive or negative, the frequency response is considerably smaller and in fact steadily decreases as omega increases. So I've told you. Thus, this simple RC filter with the voltage across the capacitor as the output is a non-ideal low-pass filter and we already have understood it. Now, to provide a first glimpse at the trade-offs involved in the filter design, let us briefly consider the time domain behavior of the circuit. In, in fact, the impulse response of the system. So uh, now we were saying that it has to be, you know what, the, it has to be a non-causal system. It has to be a causal system first. So we need to confirm that as well. So, you know, this is if the, the frequency response. So the corresponding time response is given by H of T, right? And that H of T is equal to one upon RC exponential of negative T by RC. And isn't it like this u of t as well u of t so if u of t comes uh, definitely it means this thing but let us prove it let us prove it and how do we prove it so I take my blue pen but where is it over here okay let's say take the green pen first so we know that uh, from, let's say I'm coming from this so if I have h of t I have to find x of j omega so what would be my h of j omega h of j omega is basically the integration of h of t from negative infinity to positive and multiplied with the negative j omega t integrated with respect to t fine so now what do I have I put the values right uh, 1 upon RC then you have exponential of negative T upon RC and then and then into U of T and then into exponential of negative J Omega T integration with respect to T fine now what can I do is I can take the the 1 over RC outside of the integration the U of T would suggest that the limits would be from 0 to infinity right and inside the integration I would have an exponential of negative T by RC and then multiplied with an exponential of negative J omega T with respect to T 1 over RC 0 to infinity exponential of negative T by RC negative J omega T or, or let me do it in the same step negative j omega t so now what do we have now what do we have I can take the negative t outside or if I take the yes negative t if I could take common this would be 1 over rc plus j omega 1 over rc plus j omega this is with respect to t now integration is very difficult for me but i'm giving it a try okay if i fail so i would cut this portion anyways so over here we are so this would be equal to one upon rc now the integration would imply what this is with respect to t so the the other terms would come into uh, into the division so this would become one upon one over rc plus j omega fine and then what do we have yes the same term again exponential of negative t 1 over rc plus j omega the limits are from 0 to infinity fine now 1 over rc is this one then you have a 1 upon the the, the lcm is rc multiply the lcm with a factor 1 multiply the lcm rc uh, with this thing so you have a j omega rc fine and then you have an exponential of so first you have an exponential of negative infinity right so you have a negative infinity wait wait yes it's fine it's fine negative infinity and then you have a minus you have an exponential of exponential of zero right so so i have a mistake somewhere I have a mistake somewhere 
well uh, and i will tell you whatever is the mistake so anyways uh, now what do i have this rc would cancel out with this rc and this would become an a, a, a zero this exponential of zero would be one so you have a negative one upon one plus j omega rc this is a negative one upon one plus j omega rc and basically we have a positive one plus j omega rc so this negative you know i don't know where it has it where has i done it wrong i you know very well i'm very weak in integration so this negative has to be positive and you need to confirm it please and you tell me where have i made the mistake so that i got it positive over here fine other otherwise we have proved it correct that the corresponding that the corresponding impulse response is this particular thing now we also talk of the step response of the signal we also talk about the step response of the signal step response is what when you get a unit step signal into the LDI system the output is the step response and how is the step response related to the impulse response so the step response s of t is the integration of the impulse response so over here I would not do it you you do it yourself so you would get to know that your step response s of t is equal to what let me let me check it out from the book 1 minus exponential of negative t by rc in the u of t 1 minus exponential of negative t by rc into u of t this is the step response of the system what do we have over here now let me let me draw it uh, uh, you know graphically as well uh, so this is if my s of t this is my t axis this would be my step of uh, response let's say this value somewhere over here is my rc now we have to have a look on the values of rc fine because rc is what is our uh, you know a uh, standard value you could say rc is the time constant of the capacitor or whatever it is rc is the time constant if you don't check it uh, for the time constant you could say that this is you know just the product of the capacitance and the resistance let's say although it's not this but if it is this as well so we know the value of the capacitance and resistance to improve the quality of the filter what do we have to do what do we have to do and let me wait I have missed a point we have a point uh, somewhere that is 1 upon RC and negative 1 upon RC over here I have a point 1 upon RC I have a point negative 1 upon RC now why do we define these points if we not define these points we are defining this for the cutoff frequency that before this this is the pass band that is the stop band so why have we defined this we have defined this basically to tell you about the cutoff frequency because if, if, if it were not defined so this is not a sharp transition I could say that my cutoff frequency is this point you could say that the cutoff frequency is this point somebody else could say that the cutoff frequency is at this point so what would be the cutoff frequency then so for that we define a standard value and that standard value is at 1 upon rc where the frequency response is equal to 1 upon under root 2 times the original value 1 upon under root 2 times the original value and this is what we define the cutoff frequency for this filter now this rc is our standard value if we want to increase if we want to increase the, the efficiency of this filter which means what the more it passes the lower frequencies the higher frequencies it do not pass it so which means we have to we have to bring these nearer so if we have to bring this nearer we, we mean to we, we need to increase rc if we increase rc so 1 over rc would decrease which means the cutoff frequency would reduce and this would get, get to a, a get to a position of an ideal no pass filter right so what do we have to do we have to increase the rc so the so the frequency response would improve if you increase RC this implies uh, this implies that the, the the frequency response improves right 
but have a look to the time response the same in the time domain if this is some point rc if you increase rc this word go somewhere over there to the right side which means this word increase if rc increases this means the step response becomes slower so i could write that my step response s of t could, would become slower and what do I mean by slower? If you provided a signal, it would operate sluggishly, which means it would take time to provide you the output of that signal. So, this is where the trade-off word you use. What is a trade-off? To improve one, you have to, decree, uh, to, you have to degrade the other. So, which means the trade-off means that you go in a, in a normalized way. You do not compromise one for the other. If, if you're improving one, so the other is getting degraded, so you improve one to some level that the other does not get that degraded. So now this depends on your filter design. What sort of a filter you're designing for, what purpose, whatever. The designers take it into consideration. What should be the proper value of RC so that the frequency response also improves and that the step response also do not degrade that much. And I hope this is clear. So that is it for this filter. Now uh, for the next, first I remove the board. Okay. Now, now the second case. So I remove the circuit, but. Uh, Let's say now for the second case, what do we have is we have the same RC circuit with the source voltage Vs. Now we have a capa the same capacitor, the voltage across is, is Vc. And now we take the output from the resistor. That is Vr is my output. Say in this case, my output is the voltage across the resistor Vr. Again, uh, following the, the, the same steps, you know, if you apply KVL to the loop, uh, so what would happen? This is if the KVL to the loop. So again, the same Vs would be equal to Vc plus Vr, right? Now again, we need to, we need to uh, you know, express, express what? Uh, Vc in terms of Vs or Vr. Why? Because Vc is neither the input nor the output. So we want to either express it in terms of the input or in terms of the output. So now as we know that the voltage across the capacitor Vc is 1 over C times the integration of the current with respect to time. So if you put it over there, if you put it over there, so V uh, this implies that your Vs is equal to uh, Vr plus 1 upon uh, C, the integration of current with respect to time. Now if you differentiate this, so what would happen, the derivative of Vs, this would be equal to the derivative of Vr and plus you have a, uh, so the derivative would cancel the effect of the integration. This is not mathematical term. In mathematics, you have a basic definition to it, but over here, we are not interested in that. We will we'll just say in a shortcut that the differentiation cancel the effect of the integration. So you would have a I upon C. You would have an I upon C. Now the next step, what do you do it? I multiply and divide this by an R. I multiply and divide this by N R this term okay so what do i have now in the next step i multiplied the whole circuit by an rc the whole equation by an rc so which means which implies this that rc the derivative of vs is equal to rc the derivative of vr and then uh, and then ir so isn't this IR the, the voltage across the capacitor, voltage across the resistor? It is. So this is my concerned linear constant coefficient differential equation. This is VR. 
So this is my concern equation. Now if this is a linear constant coefficient differential equation, what would this imply? This implies that the system this is defining is an LTI system. Fine. Yes, this is a first order system. Now again, if this is an LTI system, so for simplicity, if I consider my input to be, if my input that is Vs is an exponential signal J omega t, so this would imply that the output that is Vr, uh, this would be H of J omega times exponential of J omega t. Let us wait for the azan to finish. Okay, so uh, what were we saying? Yes, we said if the input is this, so the output would be this. So let's say I put it in this equation and say I name it as A. So my equation number A would imply what? A would imply that uh, you have an RC, you have the derivative of Vs, which is exponential of J omega t, and then this is equal to you have an RC this and the derivative of VR VR is H of J Omega exponential J Omega T and then you have plus VR to the H of J Omega exponential J Omega T fine now uh, taking the derivatives right so you have an RC the exponential this would be a J Omega times exponential J Omega T this is equal to RC H of J Omega then J Omega exponential J Omega T and then H of J Omega exponential J Omega T so if you see you can cut out the the, the exponential J Omega T terms fine now what do we have we have an rc j omega this is rc j omega uh, plus one and if h of j omega is taken common so this implies what that i have got my h of j omega which is j omega rc divided by one plus j omega rc and isn't it like this it uh, is it is it is now if you have a look if you have a look to the magnitude and the phase spectrum so let's say we take only the magnitude spectrum this is omega h of j omega's magnitude some sort of like this some sort of have a look what is it doing the frequencies that are near to zero the frequencies that are near to zero the frequency response is also approximately equal to zero as you go away from zero in either direction the frequency response jumps to one what sort of a filter is this? Yes, this is a high pass filter. Now again, so yes, so first let me write over here that this is now the behavior of a non-ideal high pass filter. Now again, if you define the cutoff frequency, so if I say it, the cutoff frequency is over here, so you would say this is also a high frequency, so the cutoff frequency should be over here. Somebody else would say this should be the cutoff frequency. So to define a proper point, we say omega c is 1 upon rc. Let's say somewhere here, this is 1 upon rc. Similarly over here, it's a negative 1 upon rc. And on what basis do we define? So we obviously on the basis of r a c and over here the frequency response at this particular value of omega c this is equal to 1 upon root 2 again 1 upon root 2 of the total value and yes that is it that is it now i discussed the the low pass filter in detail but now i don't have that energy you know in ramazan we don't have that sort of energy so you'd be noticing that i was very slow you can do what you can find the corresponding 
corresponding impulse response from the equation that h of t is equal to this uh, h of t is equal to yes h of j omega exponential of j omega t with respect to omega right and then what can you do is you can find the step response h of t which is the integration of h of t with respect to t and as in the previous video i commented on and not in the previous video in the previous slide you could say on the on the on the, uh, on the low pass filter now in the high pass filter you have to comment on this value of rc what should i do if i need to improve the quality of this filter which means the more i want to pass the higher frequencies and the less i want to find pass the lower frequencies you could say how to improve the quality or the effectiveness so you comment on this what would happen to the frequency response and then what would happen to the corresponding step response that is your homework i end this video over here let's say if we have something in the book <coughs> attenuates lower frequencies passes higher frequencies uh, as rc is increased the response becomes more sluggish uh, well i commented but anyways electrical filters and springs are damping devices in mechanical filters this is again something not of our interest anyways you comment on this okay so i finish this video over here this is all for the continuous time filters uh, in the next video we start the discrete time fourier transform and the discrete time filtering we see after the discrete time fourier transform so that's all about it see you in the next lecture very soon inshallah till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers and do subscribe to the channel goodbye